Hi, my name is Andrea and I'm from Antrim Coast Vineyard and you're very welcome to today's Sunday Short. As I said last week, we have started a new series called What's the Story? It was actually a series that we had started when our church was physically meeting, uh, but we are restarting this, so this series because we really just want to have a look and see what is God saying to us as the church today. When we were physically meeting, we had just finished looking at the book of Jonah uh, and it was really, really insightful and we really just gained so much from it. And so we're really expectant as we now look at the book of Ruth together. So if you've got your Bibles, we're going to be reading from Ruth chapter 1. And the book of Ruth is in the Old Testament, just four chapters long, a bit like Jonah. And it is packed full with the creativity of God. And again, God reveals himself just like he did through the book of Jonah in so many different ways. Sometimes the book of Ruth is condensed to a love story, like a romantic novel, because that thread, that sort of element of the story is absolutely beautiful. In fact, the famous German poet Goethe described the book of Ruth as the loveliest complete work on a small scale. That's lovely, isn't it? And when we're thinking about what's the story, it would be really easy to just pick up this book of Ruth and place it on the shelf of romance novels. Yet this book of Ruth is much more than a lovely story. It is the word of God intended by God to reveal more of himself to us. And that's why we're excited to be doing Ruth today. So let's read. If you've got your Bibles there, we're reading from Ruth chapter 1. And today we're just reading verses 1 to 5. And I'm reading from the NIV. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judah together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in the country of Moab. The man's name was Elamech, his wife's name was Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Malon and Kilion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem, Judah, and they went to Moab and lived there. Now Elamech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. They married Moabite women, one named Orpha and the other Ruth. After they had lived there for about 10 years, both Malon and Kilion also died, and Naomi was left without her two sons and her husband. Wow, so even in this very first five verses of Ruth, we get a lot of information. Verse 1 gives us a really telling picture about the times that Ruth was living in. In the book of Judges, which precedes this book of Ruth, it tells us about the anarchy of the society there was a really brutal culture that existed because people chose to live by their own rules. They kept forgetting again and again God's promises to their people. So the culture was riddled with mass murder, acts of violence against women and children, and the worship of false gods. That amounted to 300 years of unfaithfulness to God. If we look back at Judges and we look at chapter 2 verses 18 to 19, we get a good description of the cycle that these people seem to be repeating over and over. Whenever the Lord raised up a judge for them, he was with the judge and saved them out of the hands of their enemies as long as the judge lived. For the Lord relented because of their groaning under those who oppressed and afflicted them. But when the judge died, the people returned to ways even more corrupt than those of their ancestors, following other gods and serving and worshipping them. They refused to give up their evil practices and stubborn ways. So this time of this worldwide pandemic has caused many of us to consider the normal ways of our culture. And indeed, if we actually do want to go back to all the normal ways of our culture, this last two months has seen the vast majority of our culture's normal practices, either good or bad, completely cease. Unlike the time in Judges, we know if you listen to the news the other day, crime is actually at an all-time low. Air pollution is down, and it's down pretty drastically. And I'm sure you've noticed that the bird song is louder and more audible than we've ever known it. And actually one of the videos that Andy was recording during the week um, for just one of our devotions, he was in the kitchen and the back door was open and if you look back at that video which was on Thursday you can really hear the bird song like it's like a it's like a chorus while he's talking and I'm sure many of you have really noticed how different that sounds so for many of us our normal routines and cycles have changed and those cycles of sin that we read about in Judges this morning 
kept people of Israel captive and bound. Israel was not fulfilling its calling to be God's light to the nations. And it's got me thinking about how all of us can find ourselves stuck in our sin and we can keep being drawn back into that sin again and again and we're unable to break that cycle. And actually, if we read further on from Ruth, further on into the Old Testament, we find the book of Isaiah. Isaiah was a prophet, so his message was very centred on that deep covenant bond between God and the people of Israel. And I just wanted to read a few verses from Isaiah this morning, and this is Isaiah 42 verses 5 to 8. I am God. I have called you to live right and well. I have taken responsibility for you, kept you safe. I have set you among my people to bind them to me and provided you as a lighthouse to the nations to make a start at bringing people into the open, into light, opening blind eyes, releasing prisoners from dungeons, emptying the dark prisons. I am God, that is my name. And I love those verses and it's so true. God wants us to be released from our cycles of sin. He wants us to be set free from the burdens that we carry and from the things that keep us bound. And that's why he sent Jesus into the world. Friends, I don't know what holds you back this morning. I don't know what cycles you are stuck in. And maybe this pandemic has caused some of our cycles to be broken because our circumstances have changed. And maybe right now we're actually worried about the time when normal returns. Maybe we're hoping or crossing our fingers that bad habits or bad behaviours do not return with the return of normal. And the great thing is this morning, we don't need to cross our fingers and hope for the best. We can actually come before Jesus and ask him for his help to break the chains that keep us from fulfilling our own calling to be God's light to the people around us. And so if we go back to those first verses of Ruth, there were consequences of the way the people of Israel lived, like the famine that we read about. And we're introduced then to Naomi, whose husband took her and their two sons to live in Moab. Her husband and then later her two sons both die, leaving Naomi with her two daughters-in-law. How devastating for Naomi to find herself alone after these really tremendous losses in her life. Virtually her whole family taken from her through death and she had already been displaced from her homeland. Maybe for many of us, being physically alone or feeling alone are some things that we struggle with. And I know this difficult last few months for us all will really have changed many of our living arrangements. For some of us who were perhaps alone, we've had our world turned upside down. We've maybe had to move in with others, move in with our family, or maybe we've had children return home. And for others of us, we're alone when we would normally be spending time with others, when we would normally be seeing family and we would normally just be keeping up all those social connections. And I know many grandparents out there are really missing their grandchildren. And, you know, a lot of us are missing our mums and dads. And we've heard also many stories of NHS workers living in hotels and staying away from their homes to keep their family safe from coronavirus. And those stories are just such a description um, of what happens when we put others before ourselves. And yet the consequences of that for many have meant many lonely nights in hotels uh, and just that feeling of just being removed and displaced from the family. And like Naomi, many of us probably feel displaced through this time. And again, this morning, guys, we can come to Jesus with those feelings, knowing that he is present with us, knowing that he can comfort us. So we're just going to take a few minutes to pray now. Whether we're battling with our cycles of sin or we're dealing with loneliness, let's bring those thoughts now before Jesus. So let's just, in this time of quiet, bring those thoughts before Jesus right now. And thank you, Jesus. And you came, Lord, that our sin could be forgiven. And we pray now that you would help us to be removed from cycles of sin. Lord, we ask you to help us 
as we pursue you, as we pursue change. Lord, let this desire of knowing and loving you become greater than our desire of other earthly things. And right now, Father, for those of, us, those of us who are lonely and for those of us that are feeling lonely, Lord, we ask for your peace, the peace that passes all understanding to come and be present with us now. Lord, I ask today that you would give us a sense of your presence, a deep sense. Comfort those who are lonely, those who are hurting, those who are bereaved. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And as I said last week, if you want to talk to us, if you would like someone to pray with you, please just go to our website and you can email us or give us a phone. We would love to pray with you today. And we will continue to read from Ruth next Sunday as we pick up the story in verse six. And we really hope that you're um, going to be following this series with us um, and as we look at the story of Ruth. Uh, and, and we're just so grateful that you've tuned in today. And so thanks for being with us. Take care and we'll see you all again next week. Bye.